Hi, this is Austin Lane, your professor for CISC 179, Intro to Python at Mesa College. So today we're going to install Python. Uh, this will be the first time you'll be able to actually run some of the code you've been working on on RuneStone, but run it locally on your own PC. So to get, you're taking the training wheels off from your, uh, your RuneStone experience. So let's uh, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is go to a search engine or your address bar and type in Anaconda. Uh, I use Medigar, obviously. Uh, it's uh, it's a nonprofit, and so I can be sure that I'm not going to get any clickbait. Uh, so Anaconda, sh it should be. In fact, it's going straight to the downloads uh, page. Uh, there's also an install on Windows page that you could go to, um, and so that'll bring me to the Anaconda site. Um, the home page. Uh, it's going to ask you to sign in. That, of course, that's a big uh, no, no, you don't need that. Um, you certainly don't need to be distracted by these, um, this bit of clickbait here, uh, but you can click the download button and that should work. There's another place that you might run into. If you go to anaconda.com, you'll see the free download button right next to those other buttons. So you can, you can see those download buttons there or there. And then if you scroll down on the home page, there's also another one. This is the Anaconda navigator that you're trying to install. And right next to it is the, um, to the right of it is the free download button. Any of those buttons, all those buttons should do exactly the same thing. And they should detect your operating system and download the Windows. Um, presuming you're on in Windows, they should download the um, the Windows installer. Like uh, when I clicked on that free download button, let's try that one more time. It looks like it um, it just it pivoted to that page that we got directly from Metagur. So Metagur is super smart; it sends us to the right page anyway. So that button does actually doesn't do anything. It just sends you to this page where you click at the bottom left on the download button. Now we finally have the, the download happening and it's, um, it's gonna of course overwrite the one that I've just um, downloaded recently, but that's just fine. Um, uh, and just so you can see the, uh, what the interface looks like. By the way, I'm using Libra Wolf which is very similar to uh, Firefox. It's just a more open uh, browser, um, uh, also run by a community of, of people who aren't trying to exploit you in any way. Unfortunately, Mozilla has turned evil uh, like many others um, uh, in the browser world, but, um, but there's still a community of developers like you who are building great software uh, that you can always install like LibreWolf. Um, LibreWolf comes pre-installed with uh, ad blockers like uBlock Orange Origin, so um, it's a it's a great tool to have in your life. Okay, so that, that should bring up a um, the dialog box here that's uh, showing us how to. Um, oh, let's see. Am I recording? Yeah, I should. Yeah, I am. Um, so uh, we've got the. Um, uh, welcome to Anaconda 3. Uh, Anaconda 3 just is uh, stands for Python 3. So uh, Python 3 is the modern version of Python. 3.11 is what we're going to be installing here. You um, So once you've clicked on that, um, on your download, there'll be that, that click. You can click on the name of the file itself to run it or open that file. And that's what's happening behind my browser window. So I minimize my browser window. And I've got the end user license agreement. Um, this is the I agree button. Um, and you want to, you can, you can install it just for yourself. That's perfectly fine. Um, and then that will create in your user's directory. Now this isn't the normal place on Windows to put files and programs. So you want to take note of this. Um, it's putting it in a folder within your username, within the folder called users. You're going to need to, uh, as, a, as a software developer, you're going to need to pay very close attention to where things are. I apologize if that text is too small to read, but it's in users slash Hobbs slash Anaconda 3. And once you're inside a Python, you're going to stop using those backslashes to represent uh, directories. The next thing you have to do is decide which uh, features of Anaconda you want to install as you're doing it. Um, you want to create start menu shortcuts like you have over here um, 
in your start menu for other things. Uh, and you want to also um, probably want to also click this, uh, add it to your path environment variable. This is a special variable. You've learned about variables and I think it was chapter two. Uh, and variables, this is a special one that's always available to the operating system that tells it where to look for applications like Anaconda. And in this case, the Python application, Python 3 application. Um, we definitely, you can avoid changing that in case you're worried about it affecting any other versions of Python you may have installed, like in PowerShell and ev everywhere else. But I like to override the Microsoft versions of uh, Python, because in Anaconda 3, you'll be able to choose many, many different versions of Python and sets of packages. And I find it much more flexible. Um, you want to register it as your default Python. And you want to also uh, clear the package cache upon completion. So the key thing here is just check all the boxes. And that should uh, clean up your computer after you're done installing it. This will just re remove the small program that we just downloaded and all of the temporary files that it needs to create in order to create the Anaconda application. Now I'll talk a little bit about what's inside that application. Uh, the Anaconda dashboard or panel, I think it's called. Um, it, that's where you're going to find all the applications that are installed. Of course, one of them is Python, a Python 3 interpreter. Um, and I like to use it from the command line. And the, the best command line or terminal for doing that is called Qt Python, and it's within Anaconda. Um, uh, you're not, you want to avoid the Windows terminals uh, because they default to PowerShell or command prompts. Uh, you want to use um, a, a console that, uh, that uh, is aware of and can where you can run uh, what's called bash commands. These are file system commands like ls and cd. Uh, these will help you navigate around to where all your files are. And it's one of the key things you need to do in order to run a Python application is to find that file path. Um, and so, um, so you want to check all the boxes. And if while you're waiting, you're getting bored and you want to see what it's actually doing, you can click the show details. And so that, that text that was just flashing by will, will then appear in a scrollable window. So you can see all the different packages it's installing. You learned about the package called, or the module called random uh, uh, in chapter four, I think it was, um, and um, of RuneStone's foundation of Python programming. And um, you're gonna also install, Seaborn is a nice graphical plotting language. Um, a turtle and, and, and random, these are packages that are pre-installed with Python itself. So you're not gonna see them on this list but you can see lots and lots of other mostly scientific packages. One of the most uh, useful ones that you might end up using, especially if you're not, if you don't think of yourself as a software developer or professional software developer, but maybe you wanna use it for uh, scientific computing, maybe in biology or as a doctor or uh, in some other context, um, Jupyter Notebooks are a great way to do that. And they're a great way to create presentations of interactive code. Um, it's basically a web page um, where you can host and run um, code, very similar to what you did on RuneStone, but much more uh, capable. So you can do absolutely anything you would like uh, that you can do with Python, you can do within a Jupyter Notebook. So it's a much more capable version of that online uh, interpreter for the Python language. And you can mix it. You can put the code next to your uh, description of what that code does. That's why it's so popular as a tool uh, for presenting to other people. So you can describe what it does and then show the code. And it's great for putting plots or diagrams um, uh, that are generated with Python. Uh, that way they can see exactly, and when you're doing the presentation, you can see how you created that uh, that plot or diagram. Okay, um, that's very, very advanced stuff. You're not gonna have to worry about that today. We're just gonna do the stuff you've already done uh, in RuneStone, but we're gonna do it locally on your machine. So you can actually run uh, Python code locally in the Qt console or IPython console. 
Uh, IPython is um, a way of uh, running IPython and Qt console. They're just an, another name, other names for uh, the technology that you're going to be using to to type and run uh, Python code today. Another application that this is installing, it's somewhere in this list, is called Spider. Um, Spider is also a Python package and a group of, let's see if it's listed here. It doesn't actually list it, um, but it's an actual full application um, that is written entirely in Python. And of course it's open source like most uh, Python packages. And it will, um, it will create what's called an IDE, an integrated development envi environment. An integrated development environment or IDE is simply a text editor designed to um, edit particular kinds of text files, those like that are used for programming languages. So this one is of course great for coloring and displaying and well formatted text, um, those text files, text files for Python or HTML or any other programming language that you might be familiar with. Of course, we're going to be using it to write Python. When you create a Python file and an IDE, we typically call that a Python script, especially if you're, it's like a script for an actor. You're asking Python to go do some things uh, and print some things to the screen, sort of like you tell an actor their lines that they need to say. So we call that a script uh, for the uh, the Python interpreter. Um, and that's exactly what you've been doing. You've been writing scripts or small short scripts in, in these windows in RuneStone Academy. Uh, and today you'll be able to write much longer ones and interact in a more interactive way, sort of like having a conversation or, or telling the actor their lines one line at a time. So it's like uh, that script, but um, somebody behind the curtain yelling out to the actor what to do and say. So uh, that's what you'll be doing today with this, um, uh, with these, with this IPython console or QT console. QT, I'm not sure what it stands for, but it's just a, another word for um, a Python package for uh, building uh, graphical user interfaces, GUIs, um, the, like um, the text editor that you're going to be working with or any other applications that you would run on a Windows machine. Two kinds of applications in the world, especially in Python world. Uh, one of them is a graphical user interface uh, application or a GUI application. Uh, and so all of these things that you're working with today are going to be GUIs. But under the hood, there is often a console-based application or a command line application, it's often called, because you're writing a line or a command um, in a terminal. And the terminal is a GUI, but it's just sending that to uh, the interpreter and sending back as text. And so it's designed to interact with, uh, with text, and that's what a console application is, or a, uh, or a command line application is. Um, okay. Uh, oh, great. It's done. Sorry. Uh, we are, so you click the next button and you click it again. Uh, you don't, don't, this is what I was talking about with Anaconda notebooks. Those are also called Jupiter notebooks. Um, Anaconda is a company and a brand. Um, Jupiter is the actual open source uh, project that they're using to create those notebooks. That, that's what we talked about earlier. You're not gonna have to worry about that, but it might be something you could look into if you're into scientific computing and you don't want to become a software developer and you don't wanna use these tools long-term that you're gonna learn about learning about in this course. Um, so we're gonna be using uh, Anaconda Navigator, um, and we're going to also, you can also read the documentation, but I'm going to walk you through the things you need to know, so you don't need to launch that for now. And in fact, I'm not going to launch the Anaconda Navigator either. Feel free to do both, but um, I am going to show you what you need to do every day, uh, not necessarily what you need to do just after this install. So now where did it go? So we don't have, so the application has been installed, everything's done um, and we did, we chose to it not to launch anything. So let's, um, let's look for it. Let's type Anaconda in our start menu 
Uh, we have the anaconda prompt. That's interesting. Um, we don't want that. We want the anaconda uh, launcher or anaconda navigator. That's what it's called. Uh, sorry, I didn't um, remember the name for this. The Anaconda Navigator is just a, a window that a GUI application for launching other applications. It's, you get to navigate around all the other applications. It takes a little bit of time to launch for the first time. It'll, this will happen faster uh, once you've done it a few times. Um, it's initializing the entire uh, set of applications so it knows which ones you've installed. And remember the ones we're looking for are called QT console and uh, spider. Spider is spelled with a Y. So spelled incorrectly, kind of like Jupiter is spelled with a Y incorrectly. Um, this, uh, that's because they both have PY in them for Python applications and Python tools. Okay, um, there's a new version, so you definitely want to install that. Uh, that'll just upgrade you from 2.5.1 to 2.5.2. Uh, oops, uh, to do that, you would have to uh, quit and start again. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So it'll give us, give us practice at, um, uh, at launching Anaconda. So do you remember how we're gonna launch it after this is done? Uh, it's updating the, the, oh, it's 250 to 252. So we just installed 250 and already 252 is available. Let's, um, let's go back to that start menu and get ready for launching the Anaconda panel again. Uh, Navigator, sorry. Uh, and let's, I don't want to click on it just yet. Um, maybe, oh, let's pin it to the start menu so it comes up. Uh, high, and let's also pin it to the taskbar. So we have a nice little gr uh, green circle icon that we can launch it with. So we don't have to do that again. You can also do that by right clicking on it while it's running. Um, this is not the one that I don't think we want to pin that one. Let's see if this one says, let's see, there's an Anaconda navigator that's independent of the Python interpreter. So that's the one we want to pin uh, just so you can get back to the and directly to the Anaconda Navigator when you need to. But unfortunately, we've got to wait for it to update this package. Um, stop the video for a moment while we wait for this. That flashing progress bar, we eventually got to the Anaconda Navigator was successfully installed. You can either dismiss this uh, dialog or launch the navigator. Let's dismiss it one more time uh, so that you have to figure out how to launch it again. Now, well, I've created the icon there, but in case you haven't, uh, you want to type, go to your start menu, type Anaconda or navigator will also work. Let's try navigator this time just to make sure. Now we have got to spell it right. Navigator. There we go. So we've got anacondas and gators and pythons, a lot of reptiles in the world of Python. Um, anyway, uh, you want to click on Anaconda Navigator to get it started, um, and um, you can also click on the icon that's in your taskbar if you've pinned it to your taskbar. Once it's there, you can always right-click it and um, uh, choose to pin or unpin it, in my case, from the taskbar. Again, it's going to take a little bit longer to, uh, to run it the first time than later. I'm going to pause recording again. launch after that green circle goes away and it will pop up this window called the Anaconda Navigator. Um, unfortunately, it's got this animation in the middle that's blocking us. Do not choose sign in. You do not need an account at this company called Anaconda. Just dismiss that uh, window and go straight to, um, uh, this is Jupyter Notebook and Jupyter Lab. Those are the, the notebooks we talked about earlier that are a nice GUI interface for doing it. I'm going to scroll down until you find QT console. Ooh, there it is. And Spider. Those are the two applications you're going to be really interested in. Um, I'm wondering if there's any way we can make those up here at the top so that you don't have to. It um, uh, looks like we can only change their version or install new ones. Let's start with QT console. This is where I would like you to do most of your uh, playing, where you're just trying to understand what commands do and 
This won't require you to save a file or maintain any files or know anything about your path. It just allows you to run commands. Let's try that um, import random command that you learned in chapter four. We're gonna then re uh, generate some random numbers. And um, in chapter six and seven, I think it is, uh, you're gonna be doing some iteration through loops. So let's do that for this package. Here are some very, very useful tools. In, um, and I'm gonna give you um, some important commands for getting around in the Python world that you didn't have before, but now you've got. So now we've imported random. You can say who, and it should be listed as one of the variables that's defined in your current name space. So this space of names has a word called random defined. So we can type random. And you can also use tab completion. Uh, looks like range is also a word. It's not defined, it's not shown when you say who because it's not special, it's kind of built in. But when you hit um, tab, it's gonna give you all the things you could type that are valid Python words or keywords or variables. I'm gonna type RND and then hit tab again, then it auto completes. If you use the tab key a lot, you'll discover a lot of neat features. Like if you wanna find a particular function within random, you can hit tab at the after the dot. This is gonna list everything, but I know that I'm looking for something like a random or rand range, so I'm, or rand int. So I'm gonna look, so I hit, I hit tab after R and it went to rand, and now I'm gonna hit type int one last time. I could have just said I and it would have finished it with the tab, open parentheses. And now you get to see the signature for the, the function. This shows you, I didn't hit tab this time. Uh, it did that automatically. The, this is a nice feature of Qt console or the uh, IPython console. Here you've got um, a, um, you can generate a random integer between A and B. And this works very similar to the range function. If you, do, if you don't remember that, but you need to choose the first number at, at the first position, the argument A in this case, and you could say A equals one, but it's a positional argument. So let's just leave it as a positional argument to our function. And then let's say we wanna generate a number between one and 10. And now when we say between one and 10, what we actually mean is between one and 10 inclusive, inclusive of both words. And unfortunately the first term or the start of the iteration is inclusive in Python, but the second uh, one is not. So if we type one to 10, between one and 10 this way, you would find that it's not actually generating all the numbers that you want. And let's figure out what that is. So obviously just one running of a random number generator, rolling the dice once is gonna only give you one answer and there's no telling how many of those, how, whether that was, we just got unlucky. Let's see how often, if, if, if you remember anything about statistics, you should know how many um, um, uh, tens we should get if we roll the dice a hundred times. Let's do that now, just so you can see it. Um, let's uh, say four, we could create a for loop and we're gonna use the accumulator pattern. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to find a variable which is count tens. So I'm gonna count up the tens and right now I have zero tens that have been created. And now I'm gonna do a for loop for i. Uh, i is a typical um, integer, um, variable, especially when you're doing iteration. So we're gonna say for i in range, and again, that's inclusive, but you can just type 100 if you wanted to have something to happen 100 times. That's why Python set it up this way, so that it's not inclusive of 100 because we're starting at zero. So when we only want 100 things to happen, then we need to do range 100. And now we say, um, we could print them all out. I comma, uh, actually let's create the random number first. So um, num, we'll call it num for our random number. And then we're gonna say uh, random dot rand int. 
I'm between one and 10, though you see the bug, the semantic bug in my code. I want it to do one thing, but it's gonna be doing another. And we're gonna figure out exactly what that is by counting them up. And now we're gonna say um, count tens if let's do let's do it with an if statement, another statement that you've learned recently. Say if uh, num equals ten count tens equals count tens plus one. Uh, and this will we could also and it's not going to print anything out. This is just going to run and do all that work. And so we're going to have to examine that count tens variable. You need to hit return twice, uh, once to get to this new line. And once you realize that you do not want to type a new line of code and you didn't hit backspace to go inside of those two different, you know, notice how we have two different levels of indentation. But anyway, you hit return twice to get outside of the indentation. Uh, so it, it knows you're done. And now it has run all of that code already. And so now we can say count tens and let's see how many there were. Oh no. I was wrong. I don't understand this at all. A rand int. So let's see what the random dot rand int. If, if it is working correctly, I would expect there to be approximately 10. That, that's, that doesn't surprise me. So somehow I'm, I'm misunderstanding what the function does. So you're going to learn about a new thing you can do. You can type help is a built-in keyword in Python, and that will give you a bunch of help string about it. Um, it looks like it is inclusive, including both endpoints. So I was wrong. You do not need to do randint um, um, uh, to 11 in order to find it, uh, the number of, uh, wow, this is new to me. Anyway, um, we're using the random package. This may not work the same in other random packages like the one inside of NumPy or any advanced math ones. That may be why I'm uh, confused. But anyway, so you can use the help function to find the help on any function or package. It'll even work on the, the, the random package itself. Of course, there's gonna be a lot more documentation for that. Um, and we can also do it a different way. Also, um, another thing I'm doing that's handy is hitting the up arrow. The up arrow lets me go back through everything I've ever done, even that multi-line command that I wrote with the nested for loops, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the double indentation, the, the two different namespaces uh, or blocks of code. So I have the, the for loop on the outside, and then I have an if statement and the context within that if statement here. Um, Okay, uh, that's enough uh, playing around, I think, in uh, uh, QT console or Jupyter console or IPython console. Um, and now that I think about it, IPython is an old name for this interface, so you don't have to worry about that. To get out, oh, I was going to mention the question mark. Uh, so random.randint. So with up arrow, you just learned up and down arrow are great. Um, now you can put a question mark at the end of a function, and that does the exact same thing as typing help. Now, here's where it really gets fun. If you get, uh, this won't work for built-in functions, but it will work for code that you write. If you want to see the source code for that function, you can hit double question mark. So it gives the actual source code. Oh, wow, it did work for, um, uh, and it looks like the RAND range works the way that I expected it to, um, where it's like the range function, it's not inclusive. So you need to add one to your stop uh, um, function, stop uh, limit on your random range uh, call. Uh, if you want it to go to 10, then that means this would need to be, uh, if you're doing a RAND range, this needs to be 11. And so if we, we pass in 10 for our brand int function, and that was converted to 11 with B plus one. Uh, you're not gonna need to worry about this first argument called self. It's a hidden argument that you can't affect. It only applies to classes or objects in Python. 
Uh, we'll get into that later. So the qu double question mark is a handy way to dig a little deeper into the into a particular function or body of code. It won't always work. We got lucky that there is some actual Python code behind this one. In many cases, it's a compiled code. In order to be able to run fast, it can often be something like a C code that's been compiled. Sorry, uh, much more TMI, I'm sure. Uh, let's move on. Um, so question mark, double question mark, and help. Those are the three ways you can get, oh, and the tab button. So four ways you can get information um, about a function or the things that you might want to do. So explore around with those commands this week as you're getting to know Python in the Qt console or the Jupyter console. Um, to exit, enter doesn't do any good. So you're gonna need to type exit. Um, this will work without parentheses. Um, uh, it will also, uh, but in other IPython con consoles, you will need the parentheses. Just warning you about that. So sometimes you get out with just exit, um, or you can also get out with exit parentheses in some cases. So we did uh, Qt console over here and onto the right. Now let's move, scroll down to the Jupe Spider notebook. Let's go to the top so you can see how far. So I go down one row and then two rows and then three rows. And on the fourth row, you should find if it's a three by, if the layout is three wide, you're gonna launch Spider. This is your IDE or your text editor. You can see what it does. It's a powerful IDE for advanced editing and interactive debugging. Uh, you, you saw what a debugger can do within RuneStone. If you ever, if you hit the button, uh, check my answer and then checked show me why it's wrong. There's a, there's a, there's a several buttons you can use to launch a, a primitive debugger in, um, in, um, in RuneStone, RuneStone Academy. Okay, so you can start the tour if you'd like, just to get familiar with Spider. I'm just gonna jump right in and, and build a, a Python script. So that, that code that we just wrote, um, unfortunately I don't have IPython still open. I could launch it again by going back to Anaconda Navigator and this is a ni another nice thing about it. Um, I can save all, all that code that I just created. Um, it's still saved in the history for that application. Uh, oh, darn. That's an HTTPS link. That is weird. Uh, that's, um, doo -doo -doo. Uh, well, I'm just going to tell it to launch. Um, uh, Jupyter for all my all my links. Didn't mean to do that. Um, it seems I. Uh, uh, oh, Jupyter uh, Anaconda Navigator. It's weird. Uh, anyway, somehow it's uh, launching an application I don't want to in the web browser. Let's go back to. I'm going to go back to the Jupyter console. See if I can find it again. Uh, where'd you go? There it is. Qt console or a Jupyter console or IPython, you can see here in, in the in the logo. Okay, now if you hit up arrow, it's gonna go back to my previous history. I can see everything I've done. The reason why I'm doing that is so I can capture all this stuff. It's not gonna, it's gonna give me an error syntax error now because I haven't imported random yet. So I probably wanna go back much further to that import statement before I start running it. But all I really wanted to do um, another command you can use to, to get help with, if you've ever done something in the past that you want to redo, you type hist or history, and that should bring up um, your history of everything you've typed. So I'm going to bring that up so I can copy that code and put it into spider. Uh, looks like the spider looks like a spider web icon. I'm going to pin that to my taskbar as well so I can get back to it. Um, now I can go back into Spider. I can paste that code and I can also edit it pretty easily. Import random to deal with that syntax error that I have or because I uh, had not yet imported it and I'm using it here. Let's make it a bigger so you can see this text. This is the way that I'll probably work with text mostly um, so that you can, well, it's one of the ways that I'll be showing you. Um, and let's do this uh, find, uh, Find out um, how many tens are rolled when I, by rolling a 10-sided 
by gener well, let's, let's use the generating 100 rand int 1 comma 10 values. Sorry. Um, and so that's what this, uh, this is the doc string it's called and double quotes, you don't have to worry about this. I'm just trying, you don't even need to include this coding thing. This just explains the, what the uh, kind of text file this is. Um, uh, UTF-8 just allows you to put international characters like accented E's or even Cyrillic language for like for Ukrainian or, um, or Arabic characters or whatever uh, your native language, you can use those characters in a Python file. Of course, the keywords are gonna all remain um, uh, in ASCII. Uh, so they're gonna be English ASCII characters. Um, ASCII is a, a subset of the alphabet that we use, the international alphabets that we use for all languages. Sorry. So we've got this new script. Um, it's called temp.py and you can see the path up here. I'm gonna save it as something else. Uh, I'll save as, in fact, I'm gonna save it where my IPython console is so I can run it. All of this is very advanced. I just want you to be able to install and run uh, Jupyter console and um, Spider as well. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say PWD to figure out where I am. Oh, it looks like I'm in my user directory. And that's exactly where this is, but it's inside of that um, thing called dot spider. I like to create a direct, PWD stands for print working directory. It'll only work in IPython console or Jupyter console. Another command you can do is ls to list everything that's here. So these are all the other things that are here within that, like your contacts, your desktop, your documents, your downloads, etc. Downloads is where you'll find that uh, ls downloads if you wanted to find um, that application that we downloaded. Um, uh, Anaconda right here, Anaconda3.exe. But um, what we're gonna do is try to find that file that's hidden on that hidden directory called .spydr, if it exists there. I'm just gonna check for it real quick here, even though it's not gonna be there very, very much longer. Um, notice we use forward slashes. Oh, I'm gonna use the tab key, so it, it'll take care of that for me. Um, and now we're... Um, uh, uh, not sure why that's failing, except that because we're on Windows, maybe? Hmm, this is going to be a problem. I'm gonna to have to help you guys work with uh, um, bash commands inside of Windows. Um, they're corrupting the commands, so you can't use single quotes like you can in most um, operating systems. Um, but anyway, um, let's get let's get this job done. Let's save it. First, we're going to make a directory, mkdir. I'm going to make one called code. That's where I put all my code on all my machines. I'm going to cd, change directory into that directory. And now when I say ls, it's going to be empty. Darn, I hate that this backslash, I'm going to have to figure out a way to tell you to, to clean this up so that Qt console doesn't rely on the the Windows syntax. This is non-standard syntax for uh, dealing with directories and, and commands um, on the console. These are not Python commands. Uh, these are shell commands. And so it's using your PowerShell um, and I want it to use bash instead. Um, let's move on. Um, let's, uh, so we've got, we're in the code directory. Now I'm going to save this file, file and spider. I'm going to say file, save as, and I'm going to save it as um, nom tens. That's the name of the, of the variable we created, but I'm going to also make it the name of the file. Maybe I should change it differently. Um, uh, random, uh, I'll call it 10 sided die. So in, in D and D, you know that there's a ten-sided dice, a ten-sided polygon that you can roll. That um, uh, and there's a twenty-sided as well. Um, but in, uh, I need to define that. That reminds me, I have another syntax error here. 
count tens. I need to define count tens. Whenever you use a variable, um, you need to define it before you use it um, because we're using it on the right-hand side and we're assigning it on the left-hand side. And this is gonna run first. And so we haven't defined it yet. So this would give us a syntax error unless we defined it first. So I'm gonna define it first and now we can run that script. Um, I guess we could probably run it here. Let's see where it is here. It's in that user directory again. So it looks like we have a console here. I wonder, it looks like this one is also a PowerShell console, but anyway, we're going to um, make it bigger so you can see what I'm typing. I'm not gonna recommend you type it here. Once I figure out how to get bash working, I'm gonna show you how to do that uh, next week. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna CD into that code directory that's here. I'm going to ls again, and oh, I saved it in the wrong place. I saved it in that um, spider directory. Let's go uh, file, save as, and let's, um, let's, I could use the mv command to move it, but instead, I'm just going to save it somewhere else. I'm going to find that code directory. I have to go to home, and that's not going to work. I'm going to have to go up a level. Come on, maybe it's in here somewhere. Windows stinks. So I am going to have to move it uh, from the console. This is why I like the console because you can never rely on Windows to, to show you the things you want to look for. Notice it was not showing me hidden directories or even where I was. Um, so I need to um, say mv uh, dot dot to go upper directory dot spider three, and I'm going to look for 10 sided die, hitting 10 and then typing 10 and then tab, the word 10. And I'm gonna move that to where I am now. So the dot represents the current directory. Looks like I'm gonna probably need uh, double quotes for PowerShell. It's a real hassle to work with PowerShell. Um, and now this should work. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, doesn't look like PowerShell likes um, move commands. Uh, let's see if it works without any quotes. And let's try, um, well, uh, maybe I'll try this. Uh, so uh, I can't even, Windows is preventing me from even using the simple command to move it. Um, wonder if copy will work. And I'm gonna have to use uh, move or copy or whatever they call it in. A rename. Five percent MV. Okay, uh, these are percent is magic. We're hosed. Uh, I didn't save it in the right place and it's impossible for me to find it. Um, so I'll record another video once I figure out how to fix your Windows operating system to work properly with files. Uh, good luck, uh, have fun playing around with your Spider IDE as well as your QT console. QT console is where you'll do most of your fun things. Um, and you can launch it independent of the Spider or you can use it within Spider uh, itself. Good luck.